Hey guys, so this is here bringing you another video. So welcome to another episode of like Challenger Spectates. I guess we're calling the series. Uh, I will say caveat to that. Uh, there are currently no Challenger players uh, of the time recording this video. Uh, with all the new LP and all the new divisions, Riot just like got rid of every Challenger player. And I think at the moment, the, the top you can get is Master or something. Um, but yeah, this these players would be Master player, uh, Challenger players if Challenger did exist, but it doesn't. So this player is the best uh, Cassadin on EU West. He's the third best Cassadin in the world. I think it actually, if I very quickly look, if I still have the list up, yes. It, uh, so he's the third best and he's getting, by the way, this is against Nico, and that's why I liked going on this game. A very popular new champion. How does Cassadin do? So, the best champ uh, the best players in the world on Kassadin. Number one is Korea. I can't say his name because he, he it's Korean. And uh, number two is a guy in LAN, and his name is I Love the Pizza. Uh, and then this guy is third in the world, uh, unpredicted. Um, so, yeah. So, he is running Fleet Footwork. We're against Nico, obviously the new champion. So, how does Kassadin do one against Nico? And how does this... Like, again, I want to learn Kassadin. And, again, this is what this series is for. It's for me to learn them. I'm taking E-level one on Nico, by the way. I want to learn the champions and who the best people to learn them from. To me, this is kind of one of the best things you can do. You get their replay file and you kind of just look in depth. You can pause it. You can rewind. You can slow it down, you know, to work everything out. Um, and this is it. So you have complete control. If you're wondering again, how do you get this? Then you just go on a website that you can look up the best players on champions. LOL skill does it. I think OP.GG does it or whatever. Look up the, the best players on their champs. Then go on the client. So I only look up EUS players because I can search EUS players on my client and you can directly download the replays in the client of League as long as the game that you want to watch is on the same patch that the game is currently on. All right, Heimerdinger dies in top lane. So it's Heimerdinger top against a Fiora. You can see this is where I'm kind of like, how the hell does Cassidy cope with this? Because he's getting harassed down. Um, he has opted for Dark Seal and a refillable. Uh, but obviously, he has got, obviously, the Fleet Footwork, which is really good regen. Um, you kind of want to use the Fleet Footwork proc on champions, but obviously, he's going to risk himself if he ever does that. So, he probably doesn't care enough to try and do that right now. He's also running Teleport, which I think is the correct decision, because he's going to get poked down to have the, the ability to go back and buy uh, when he does eventually get poked down, I think is the correct decision. Getting that fleet footwork proc. You can see his farming isn't bad. He's going for farm that he actually can get. And he's kind of leaving farm out that he can't. Because again, sometimes like that, if he went for that, he would have got poked out. It's just not worth going for it. So that's one thing that is worth mentioning. He pops his W to give himself the E proc. So again, main, maximizing his knowledge of when to do certain things. Because um, obviously, if you don't know, Cassidy's E is locked off. That you have to use, have a certain amount of abilities happen around you, and then you can use the E. Uh, you can see Nico is obviously doing a lot of harass, even stopping him base to a certain extent. He has got the teleport, and this is exactly what it's for. So what I would predict is this guy knows he isn't going to win the early game. He's probably not even planning to. He's teleporting straight away, which I find quite questionable, because he returns to lane not full health, and really he returned for one minion. One minion for, like, not losing out on... Nearly 150 health he, he based early for. I'm not sure if that's worth it. But he probably also wanted to do what he's doing right now is push it really quick. Hell, he might push it really quick and then go back again uh, for just a little bit extra gold that he's now picked up. So he's rushing it probably a little bit too much. So he actually did miss a bit of farm there. Uh, double kill in the bot lane. Nico roams down. So Nico didn't go back and buy. She actually roamed into the bot side. You can see... All of them are low, but Nico gets herself a bunch of gold there. Zerath gets himself two kills. And, uh, you know, Cassadin, by the time Nico gets back to mid lane, I don't think this Cassadin is even going to be even in farm. So, a big advantage for the Nico, obviously. Uh, but again, as somebody that's been spamming uh, Nico recently, I would probably like the Cassadin matchup. If, if something crazy doesn't happen from now until mid game, and again, just to say, I know the end result of this game. I have to if I'm downloading the replay. But I don't know how they got there. I've got no idea. I'm going into this blind of how actually anything happens. Um, so again, he's got the Dark Seal early buy. And then he upgraded his refillable to the Corrupting Potion. Uh, maximum sustain with Fleet Footwork, which obviously is the healing uh, rune. Um, which also does do a lot of uh, very heavy scaling of AP as Fleet Footwork. That's why it used to work on Victor. That's why Kaisers take it when they go AP Kaiser at least. It's because the scaling with AP is three times better than AD champions. Like it's really good. 
Um, but anyway, farm, he has caught up near enough to the point that it doesn't really matter too much. He's actually putting a ward just to clear out that vision, which is good. You can see on the minimap, you saw the, the, the vision wave. That, so we now know the enemy jungler is over here somewhere. But level 6 is practically what we're waiting for. So we knew the Shivana was in the area. She's now even going to clear up the ward straight away. Uh, and now Nico could be roaming again. And, you know, as a Kassadin, you're not really going to roam against somebody pre-6. Uh, because your whole champion is about roaming after that point. So there's the Nico. She is looking to roam. She actually disguised herself as um, the Shivana initially. Big engage coming out by the end by a friendly bot lane here. They do kill the Vayne, but now Nico, you know, was in bot lane this whole time. Do go are going to pick up one. Kastin is now roaming. Nico's not dead yet, by the way. She picks herself up a double kill. Shivana comes for a turn gang. Nico dings six from the kill. She will go down, I would think. And then Kastin, I, I believe he will be able to get away. But very messy. Again, this is, you know, challenger master quality. That yes, it was good that they killed the Vayne, but them going that all in to kill the Vayne opened up that Lucian to the Nico, and then the Shivana got there in time. And I think that trade, it may have ended three for three. Um... And, you know, Kasten gets himself on the board. But again, when you're comparing mid laners, he got one kill that Kasten in for that play. Nico got at least another one. Maybe she got two. And now Nico's 2-1-2. Two, two. Uh, gold difference in mid lane right now is 2,600 to 2,100. There's already a 500 gold difference in mid lane alone. You can see but a top lane, even though this Heimerdinger now has died three times, it just helped the, the, the gold difference. But the gold difference isn't even that big in top. So that's obviously something worth mentioning. Big gold difference already in the mid lane. Uh, bot lane also will say 0-2 Lucian is still beating out the farm. Which is good to see. Um, so Cassidin and why I think Nico could be a good pick versus Cassidin is Nico's got insane wave clear and she's also got pretty good roaming. And Cassidin wants to roam. So like how do you roam against a Nico that's going to be pushing the wave quicker than a Cassidin and also has good roam potential too? You know, Nico, I, I I have said that I do think she's a very strong champion. I think she can be balanced if they just change a couple of the numbers and maybe remove a couple of things that she doesn't necessarily need. Um, but right now, she's a little bit overtuned. So bot lane potentially getting ganked again. The Nico's pattern has been going bot lane twice already. That's where she's got all these kills. So when, the, when a pattern starts to emerge, take it as a pattern. Don't ignore it. Go, oh, she's probably going to go bot lane again. And, you know, actually use the information that the enemy is giving you. Heimerdinger actually gets a return kill on the Fiora, uh, which is a bit worrying. But he has opted for two Doran's rings, which is very much... Basically, the more Doran's items you use, whether it's Doran's blades or rings, they're investing more into the early game. That's what you've got to think, is that those Doran's items don't upgrade to anything. So they're heavily investing in their early game damage, early game survival, because they're not... You know, you can't build a Doran's into a Morellonomicon or anything. It just is a Doran's. Shivana trying to opt for a blue steel here. I'd say it's a little bit questionable. Uh, she does get it though. Oh no, Kazix gets it with a smite at the end there. Um, he did get the blue. So it's good that she didn't steal it. But, you know, very aggressive Shivana play looking for that. But she, I don't know, she had ult, so she was kind of safe. Uh, uh, Nico's build is something that I've, someone's mentioned to me is a potential that I've not tried. Nico again roaming down to the bot lane you can see on the minimap there. The uh, Hex Tech Proto Belt. Uh, whatever it's called, that apparently is not bad on Nico. that it gives you that little bit extra jumping room for your ultimate. So when you're channeling your ultimate, it's like, oh god, I'm just out of range. You, before you jump into the air and get, you know, your stationary, you use the proto belt and you actually get in range to do all the damage. That's apparently why it's good. Okay, so Kastin, not actually doing what I thought he was. I thought he was going to go to River to pick up the, that mana. He's not opted for that. Enemy team, uh, Heimerdinger picks up another solo kill. Shivana be now fighting the uh, Kassadin. An assist comes through. Questionable decision, I'd say, by the Kazakhs. I think Kassadin eventually was going to have that no matter what. These guys should be pushing this in, but surviving the Xerath ultimate is good. Enemy team know that this is happening. The longer you wait here, the more time you're giving people to react. The more time you're letting a teleport happen. The more time you're giving Nico an opportunity to come and help. This is why these type of dives are scary, because now Heimerdinger's here, boom. And that's because they delayed the gank. That, that, that's why. Um, so Heimerdinger went from a point of being 0-3 to now 3-3. Pretty good, actually. And then Nico returns to the mid lane and now is increasing the farm a little bit more. So th this game, again, is a pretty good one so far, because the, the friendly team that I'm focusing on, again, he doesn't go with full mana again. Uh, full health and mana, it's weird. Um, again, when you're running out of base... 
I don't think it's a big of a deal because some people say to me, Huz, you're running out of base without full mana and health. Why? Well, by the time you run to the, the lane, a lot of the time the regen will get you to full health and mana. But when you're teleporting there, there's no regen happening. You're just, that's the health you're on. So to me, it's a little bit weird. Nico potentially could be going top lane. And again, very roam heavy playstyle, this Nico. Uh, more than I'd probably even say she needs to do, but it is it's working relatively. Cassadin has now caught up with farm. He is opting for a, looks to be a Rod of Ages build, which is, you know, classic. Um, it's a ramping up build that you'll eventually get quite strong in mid-late game, but not very much strength in the early game. But that's Cassadin in a nutshell. Um, so he is now going to return back to mid lane. I'm, I'm curious if you're wondering what's going through my mind. My, my thought is at the moment, will do I think he ever can fight Nico in a 1v1? Do I think this Cassidy would ever go for the kill? Like, will he actually attempt to do it? That's what I'm kind of interested in the most. Again, for the third best Cassidy in the world, there are some questionable things. Like, uh, Nico, once again, by the way, roaming into the bot lane. I'd be good if there's some survival, but I doubt both of them are going to survive. Yeah, one goes down. Again, further roaming by Nico that Cassidy isn't controlling right now. Um... But his mana control is pretty bad. This guy is always on low mana. And that's basically saying to the enemy team, this Cassidy can't do a lot right now. Uh, when you're looking at somebody in mid lane going, oh, where's Cassidy? Oh, he's in mid. Oh, can he come bot lane and gank us? Nah, he's got no mana. Like, that that's what that is telling the enemy team, is when you're constantly having no mana, you're not really going to do that much. Now, he does get a bunch of gold. He potentially should have got one more auto attack on that tower. I think he probably cheekily could have got it, and that would have got, got him another 160 gold, which I definitely think is something he needs right now. But he did get a bunch of gold there. Basing there, he's going to get cancelled, I'm pretty damn sure. Uh, again, whenever you're basing in an area, just... Oh, he's going for the kill, but he's, again, out of mana. He's getting a bunch of damage. He got a bit of regen. Nico goes for some just return damage and wins the trade. Um, it was good to see, I would say, it was good to see some aggression. Uh, the castanin has been very passive uh, this game so far. And I say rightfully so. I don't know if he can do anything uh, to the Nico. If he whittles her down a little bit like that, gets a tower hit, this is the dead Nico. So he finally is going to get a kill here, I'm pretty damn sure. He, he I don't know, the flash expense, sure. I don't think he needed to do it. I think he would have killed her. But maybe the Cassidy didn't know if she had flash or not, so fair enough. But there you go, he does eventually get the kill. And when I'd say... It was good play by Cassidy, obviously, but it was just sloppy play by the Nico. Getting hit by that tower is what killed her. Like, that was just too much aggression by her. So much so to the point that she got hit by the tower. So, yeah. Uh, big fight happening in top lane. Really good trade for uh, the, the friendly team to the Cassidy. But Cassidy is just nailing this tower. for a melee, Remember, a melee-orientated champion. He is going to kill the tower pre-14 minutes. So he gets all that lovely gold. And now, even though Nico has been involved in two more kills than the Cassadin, the Cassadin now is ahead in farm, and now gold, I would wager he's really far ahead. So he's got 6,100 to 5,000. He's now over 1,100 gold ahead. By basically staying in mid lane, he, he went bot lane a little bit earlier, got one kill, but majority of what this Cassadin has done has just stayed in mid, farmed, beat a Nico in farm, which that should not happen, and then eventually punished a mistake that she got hit by a tower. But it was, you know, it's the tower goal that really has turned it. You got 160 times 5, with the final one giving you an extra 300. Like, that's a lot of gold. Like, that's easily... That's over a thousand gold, and that over a thousand gold is the difference between the two of them. So there you go. Towers are very important. So Zerith, obviously, as a, as a support, he is actually quite strong now himself, but very squishy. If Cassidy manages to get on top, or if... if oh, here we go. So this is the Fedness coming through. So Nico goes for an ultimate, doesn't really do anything to the Cassidy. He is going to probably get the kill. He predicts the right target, which was that one. And he picks himself up another kill. His tower does get taken, but it was after the 14 minute point. So Nico did not get all the plate gold that the Cassidy did. And if you look into the gold still, there is still that 1000 gold lead that the Cassidy has. And he is now also building himself up this bounty. You, you just saw there, because I've seen some people confused. Has his bounty just gained 50 without getting a kill? Remember, bounties grow even by farming it now. If you do not die... Um, and you're farming a lot, your bounty will slow, slowly grow. So he went from a 400 bounty to a 450 bounty from farming. And again, I love the new bounty system. I know some people don't like it because it de it, it punishes only farming playstyles. But I think that's a good thing. Only farming playstyles are really boring. Um, so I like it a lot. 
Um, so the gold score is still in the enemy's favor. A three, two and a half thousand gold lead for the enemy team. But blue team is taking the Rift Herald, which is always, always a nice thing. That is most likely going to give your team a free tower, or it should. Um, so many people waste the Rift Herald because they use it in just the wrong circumstances. Uh, but you can actually see, which is very confusing, Cassidin now has a Tear of the Goddess, okay? He bought Tear of the Goddess, if I'm not mistaken, after he finished Rod of Ages, or around the same time. That's a really late tier. You know, as I was saying, like, in the all of the early game, oh, this Cassidin's not very good with his mana, but probably his decision-making is not caring about lane phase too much. He's like, I'm just going to get through lane phase and I'll be a beast in mid-late game. That's probably why he didn't get a tier early, because obviously tier makes you... Well, a tier actually makes you even weaker. Uh, Nico going for a big play. Cassidy... Um, Kazix gets in the in the mix, gets himself a kill. That's the real one. Kassin just one shot and gets the, the big bounty. Uh, Kassin now going on the Heimerdinger. Heimerdinger uses his ultimate. Kassin is on his way. Heimerdinger's used flash into the Kassin's uh, grips. Nico and Kassin will now duke it out a little bit. Heimerdinger tower is still up, so he's going to be careful of the damage. But I do think Kassin will most likely get this kill. Nico, that was the correct Nico, by the way. She did a duke. Because if Kassin predicted that was the real Nico, that was a dead Nico. Somehow Fiora does die, by the way, to the uh, Shivana in the 1v1, which you probably would not guess, but did happen. Uh, but Cassidy picks him up, so, uh, you know, one or two more kills. He is working his way to be the monster, and he is actually going to get this kill as well. Uh, that, that'll be obviously pretty nice too. Shivana making the wrong decision, in my opinion. Why would you fight him there when you've got the tower? Uh, it does kill him, though. But you had the tower there. If she ran more into the tower, she may have lived. Like, that's my point. Like, it's good that Shivana killed the Cassidy, but I do think she made a mistake, like, fighting him when she did. Like, it was it was fine. They both died, but potentially she could have lived and he could have died. So that's just one thing I'll say. Also, my camera seems a little bit high. Um, finishing Art Changer with his build, by the way. Um, Zerath potentially got himself into a tricky situation, being a little bit greedy with the Lulu damage. Um... But yeah, so he's finished Archangel. So it's the core build. It's the two items that have the biggest, like, cores to them. Uh, you're stacking Rod of Ages once per minute. Then Tear is eventually going to become a Xerath's Embrace. So you need time to make this build work. Um, but again, this is where, as a player, you've got to predict, do I have time? And this is why champions like Kassadin or Vayne on the enemy team or Kai'Sa or... Oh, good predict. That was really nice by the Nico. That's just Nico in a nutshell pretending to be a low target. That was really nice. Um, but you know, like Nasus, is it worth playing the ticking time bomb champions that are going to be gods in the late game, but they suck in the early game? Well, that's the, that's the risk you're running uh, because all these builds take a, a while to get strong. Um, obviously, by the way, Ka Kazakh still has his uh, Rift Herald, so this should be used probably for top lane, I would imagine, while it's getting pushed. Enemy team still has the gold advantage, as well as the kill advantage, as well as the dragon advantage. And remember, it is a Shivana, so every single dragon that the enemy team kills is also gaining Shivana's passive, which I think from memory gives her resistances, I want to say, May and maybe some damage. I can't really remember everything. Uh, Fiora does actually then pick up a solo kill on the Heimendinger, so... The top lane in this game has been really random. The Fiora's been dying here and there a lot. She now does die to the Shivana who came bot lane to sort that out. But, you know, Hymening has got solo kills on the Fiora. Fiora's got solo kills. Like, who's winning that lane? No one knows. Uh, but the Rift Tower is getting used now. Really good use. That's two towers getting killed. So a bunch of gold now added to the pockets of Kha'Zix and uh, Kassadin. Arguably to the two carries that are, you know in this game and you can see the lucian is 0 5 the lulu is 1 and 4 and i will say obviously they did have a rough laning phase because the roaming but has everybody looked at what that cassadin just did in a game that you're not winning that you're uh, behind in gold that the enemy team is slightly ahead this cassadin has bought magi he upgraded his dark seal to a magi's that's either a lot of experience on cassadin and he just buys the item regularly or that is confidence that he's like, oh, I'm going to get really fed. Even though he's got a 0 5 AD carry, he's just like, no, I'm going to get fed. Because, you know, buying uh, buying Medjai when you've got like no... Uh... Oh, here we go. Wow. Okay. Well, there's the confidence. But again, if he buys Medjai here and dies, not worth it. He just lost all of his stacks. He had six stacks. And now he's lost them all. So straight away, it's not been worth the purchase. Right now, anyway. 
Uh, Fiora picks up one kill, gets a really nice parry to block some damage. Enemy team a little bit overstaying, and this eventually will be the death, I believe, of everybody. Shivana does have a lot of damage, so you can't underestimate it. They do kill her in the end, and that leaves Heimerdinger in the mid lane, sucking his thumb. Uh, so yeah, good play. So the kill uh, score now is even. No team now has an advantage, but still a slight gold lead for the enemy team. Um, and, you know, Kastin gets two stacks after everything. He started upgrading the item at six and now has got two. So you tell me if you think that's worth it. Again, we'll find out. If he builds it up to 20, then sure. Flanking play happening right now. Heimendinger is aware of this because he had a tower back here. He is building his ultimate, which does more damage the more stacks you have. He is now working his way to maybe try and find the Heimendinger. But I think Heimendinger went that way. Maybe he went the wrong way. Um, so probably, you know, a little bit of a waste of teleport right there. He is going to just opt probably to go get the blue instead. Which obviously he needs. Oh, he is actually hunting the Heimerdinger. Wow. This is interesting. So he misses the stun. That opens up the Heimerdinger completely when he misses the stun. And yeah, Kassadin eventually finds him. That's kind of funny. So yeah, he's like, yeah, I, I'm, I teleported to kill you. I'm killing you. He's probably going to pick up these plants and then do the buff. Uh, he might do the crab. There's a chance. Eh? He's going to back out of it. Let's do the blue buff, I guess. So he's back up to six stacks of Magi's from killing the Heimerdinger. Um, you know, this guy is very strong. He does a lot of damage. I presume his next item is a Lich Bane. Because, again, this guy is going for, which I know is a cast in playstyle, an auto-attack centric playstyle. He's every single W. He's going on top of people. He's not really wimping out and just using his Q and E. He's getting in the mix, uh, which I think is very important. Kassadin one-shots the Zerath. For some reason, by the way, Nico in how spectating works, we can hear Nico ultimate, like, no matter where she is on the map, so that's a bit odd. A uh, return kill's coming out for both teams there, so nothing crazy is happening. Uh, and by the way, as a Kassadin, he is furthering his gold lead in terms of farm to the Nico. Um, as the Nico continues just to be a little bit fighty in team fights, the Kassadin is doing a bit of split pushing. The gold lead is most likely opening, so that is worth mentioning. Um, and, you know, he's pushing into a, you know, nearly a Nexus tower or a um, inhibitor tower. Again, he's this is probably just more gold farming because it's not really going to achieve anything right now. They definitely can't get it. Shivana walks straight into the enemy team. This is really good play by them. Flanking play happening because the vein is really caught out right now. This is going to be a dead vein as well. Kastadin doing a lot of damage with his ultimate. Boom, she goes. Gets 700 gold there. Up to 12 stacks of his Magi. Gold lead now between the two lanes. You can see is over 12,300 gold. The overall gold is the bracket number. And then, you know, the comparison between mid laners is quite big. They're now going to go for the Baron because they have Fiora distracting the Nico in bot lane. She doesn't die. Neither of them die, but that's worth. The jungler just died. The AD carry died. So this is basically a free Baron. Uh, Heimerdinger and Zerath are probably around, so Kassadin makes the, you know, executive decision to go and try and find somebody. He might go for this guy. I don't know why he's so big. Does anybody know why he's so big? God, that ultimate damage is so much. Whoa! One shots him and double kill. Really random play happening by the enemy team there. You know, no Zonya. Oh, really low health Nico. But no Zonya use by the Heimerdinger, but then the Zonya use by the, the or the, um... The stopwatch used by the Zerath. Surely that should have been the other way around. Kassadin was jumping on the Heimerdinger, so he should have Zonyas. And uh, Zerath was relatively safe where he was, so he should have been trying to damage the Kassadin. So they both just make a mistake. And wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. He's up to 20 stacks of his Magi's. And, uh, you know, now, obviously, well, not now. It's been a while, but you can get 25 stacks of Magi's, which he's one or two kills away from getting that. Nico overstaying in the bot lane. You know, why Why are you overstaying when you've got a really fed Cassidy in the team? He makes the wrong decision. Again, this Nico, I would say, has been relatively predictable, funny enough, with her um, her W. She goes to the same place every time. All right, so Shivana, there may be a bit of lag there, like spectate lag. Shivana now chasing down the Cassidy. I don't think he's going to die. He might actually eventually kill um, her when the ultimate runs out, and that's maybe what he's waiting for. He's got to be careful, though. He does have the shield, by the way, was still from Xerus. But the, the regen happening from Shivana, I think he's just going to back out. Because, again, Shivana's bought Blade of the Ruined King for some reason. Uh, Kassadin go, um, Ka sorry, Kazix goes for a crazy play. It doesn't pay off. Fiora does pick himself up one kill, though. Vayne going a little bit too deep does kill a Lulu. But, again, you always ask yourself the answer. Is killing a Lulu worth you using heal and dying as a, you know, this, this time of the game? So, eventually, um, the Kassadin does kill the Shivana as well. 
There's the 25 stacks, by the way. So, and he's now worth over a thousand gold with his bounty. So, I've learned a bunch from Cassidy in this game. And one of my biggest things that, you know, if you're just wanting little pieces, like, oh, I want to play Cassidy is really don't care about your lane phase that much. Like, he was just confident that he'd do better anyway. Like, he built ro Rod, and then, as I mentioned, he built Tear after his Rod of Ages, which is something you normally never do, because it takes too long. But he's like, ah, I don't care. Like, I'm going to get strong anyway. I'm even going to go buy a Magi. Uh, and he's... Uh, another point of his playstyle that is different to Kassadin's that I've played against. This guy is jumping on top of people, basically, no matter what. He's being smart about it for sure, but he's really getting in there. A lot of castings that I see and play with are pretty wimpy that they won't get in there and use their W. But obviously this guy's going for the Lich Bane build, which some castings do. So this guy has to go in the middle to do his damage. So it's, it's really good to see. This is basically the ultimate example of a Cassadin doing the all-in playstyle, and it's working really well. He's doing some emotes while waiting for the blue. He, By the way, he is level 18. And in comparison to his lane opponent, the Nico, the Nico right now you can see here is level 14. He is four levels ahead of his lane opponent by basically doing smart split pushing. And I will say, yes, I do give this guy a big credit. While again, he's split pushing, no one is stopping him. But a lot of these things that are going good for this Cassadin is because the enemy team is playing so bad. Like, it's weird at this level to see the enemy team don't... Like, they're not stopping this Cassadin. No one is like... No one really stopped him split pushing. And when they tried to, they died in a 1v1. And look what's happening right now. He's killing both Nexus Towers, and remember, because he's got the Lich Bane build, he does a crazy amount of damage, and there's a Surrender Boat by the enemy team. Like, again, he did really well, and this is a great example of a Kassadin, but I will say, for a Challenger's level game, Master level game, no one on the enemy team controlled the Kassadin. But then I guess you've got to ask yourself the question, could they control him? Like, did, was he playing just too good that you just couldn't control him? Arguably, maybe. Um, but it was a bit weird to see. But anyway, that is going to be it. He finished the game, by the way, a bunch of gold ahead, or farm ahead of the Nico. And gold-wise, 16,000 gold to 11.2. And he finished level 18, obviously the highest level. And he was level 18 for quite a while. His lane opponent, I think, was still level 14, maybe level 15. But yeah, just really good play. Again, they, the enemy, uh, the, the friendly team, the blue team, were behind in gold for a long time this game. You know, the AD carry here is still negative KD. He was 0-5, I think, at one stage. It wasn't looking great. You know, Fiora was getting solo kills and then dying. She finishes more deaths than kills too. It was these two that kind of pulled this game together, but especially uh, the Cassidy, and he played really well. But anyway, that's going to be it. If you guys did enjoy, throw a like on the video, subscribe. Uh, there'll probably be one or two more of these episodes because, again, it's just good content while the, the festive season is happening. And I'll see you guys next time.